Today we're going to learn about peak sun hours and how to calculate it for beginners. This will allow you to see if your system is actually producing what it should and allow you to compare it to other systems. So if I want to see if this carport solar system is producing more than another system, such as a solar panel on some bricks or solar panels on a ground mount array like this, or if they're mounted like this. And there's an easy way to calculate how much these are producing over the course of a day. Because if you do an instantaneous measurement, it doesn't tell you that much. And you can use this equation on large arrays or small arrays. You can use it with a single panel or this entire carport. So let's go in the workshop and I'll show you how. Now all you'll need is two different things. First, the energy generated over the course of one day, and then two, the STC output of your solar array. And this is very easy to find. If you have a 100 watt panel, that means you have a 100 watt STC output. So if you have 10 of them, you wanna say that you have a 1000 watt STC output. So all you have to do is take the total energy generated and divide it by the STC output of your whole array. So let's do a quick, easy example. Let's say we have a 20,000 watt solar array, and over the course of a day, it produces 100 kilowatt hours. We're gonna take 100 and divide it by 20, and that will give us five peak sun hours. And this number will allow you to compare it to other arrays at your latitude or on your property. All you're doing is division, very simple. I use it all the time to see if my systems are actually working as they're supposed to. Here in Las Vegas, I can get six upwards of seven sun hours, but if I have bifacial gain, I can get about seven and a half. Now, if you have a budget-friendly 12-volt system and you can't figure out the kilowatt hours over time, you're going to have to add a shunt and calculate it yourself or get an MPPT that can track it over time like a Victron. That way it will be graphed and you can do this calculation very easily. Also, you can use peak sun hours to compare your output over time. So let's say you build a system and everything's working great. And then in a few years, you're getting less peak sun hours a day. There might be a faulty panel or connection or something. At least you know that there's something wrong. So let's go around my property and I'll show you some of my figures and we'll do some quick examples. First example is the carport. And two days ago, it pulled 70 kilowatt hours. And the STC output of these panels is 440 watts. And we have 24 of them. So the STC output for the entire array is 10,560. So 70,000 divided by STC output comes out to 6.6 .6 peak sun hours, which for my latitude and the weather that I've been having, that's fantastic. Next, my grid tie system is 16.32 kilowatt STC output. And yesterday it generated 100.2 kilowatt hours. And if you divide those numbers, you get 6.1 peak sun hours, which is less than the carport, but not by much. Consider that this system is mounted an inch off my roof. The other one is bifacial panels mounted on a carport, so that one should be a lot more than that. But in a previous video, we learned that it's not a good environment for bifacial gain in my backyard. So the bifacial gain is not that much better than just a traditional monocrystalline system. Now this array has bifacial solar panels, but they're very close to the roof. So the bifacial gain will not be that great. And we have nine 440 watt panels in series. It generated 25 kilowatt hours. And the total STC output of this array is 3,960. So if you divide those, we get 6.3 peak sun hours, which is almost the same exact figure that we got for the roof mount system. So one is monocrystalline, one bifacial, but they're getting around the same performance. This one is getting a 0.2 peak sun hour gain over the other one, but they're also angled differently. But this is how you can compare them is with peak sun hours. Now, the best performance rack I've ever had was with bifacial solar panels in the IR30 from Integra rack, and it was mounted right here. So we could use all the bifacial gain before these buildings were constructed. And even during spring, I was pulling seven sun hours, which is incredible. But you'll notice that even when the panels are like this, the output is pretty good over the course of a day. Now this is the cheapest way to mount a solar panel. You just put it on some bricks. And you'd be surprised that even with a bifacial panel that has no bifacial gain, we can still pull five to 5.5 sun hours a day with this method. Because most of the absorption and most of the generation happens when the sun is directly overhead. So the best bang for your buck will always be this configuration. Just get more panels. Now if you're limited on space and you have a good environment for bifacial gain, you can take advantage of that, but it's not for everybody. Usually just getting more panels will make more power. 
even if they're in a compromised position like this. Just face them up towards the sun and that's it. Now tilt can make a difference during the winter, but during summer, not so much. Now this is a 30 degree tilt and it's fantastic at my latitude for increasing bifacial gain. And under ideal circumstances, I'll only get two extra sun hours more. And these frames cost as much as the solar panel. So if you can find a cheap way to mount your solar panels and get more solar panels, you'll always win. But if your space is limited, then you'll have to go with something like this. Something else to mention is when you put your panels close to the surface that it's mounting on or on the ground, they're gonna run at a higher temperature and that will increase the rate of degradation. It's not that much though. These things can last 30, 40 years with very minimal degradation, but mounting them like this to improve biofacial gain will also lower their internal cell temperature and reduce the rate of degradation. The cooler the panel is over time, the longer you can use it for. And even after 30 years, when you have reduced output, you can still use these panels. But remember, panels are cheap. If you can put more of them out, who cares about the output? If you can make more power today, that's what matters most. The best output you'll ever have is today, so try to use it. But this is the cheapest way to do it, and the output figures are incredible. You won't believe it. Even though everyone thinks that the tilt needs to be perfect, Guess what? Most of the irradiance, even during winter, is when the sun is directly overhead or above 45 degrees from the horizon. After that, the power output drops off substantially. No matter where you live, the more panels you have to absorb more sunlight is what matters most. Just get as many panels as you possibly can and mount them however you can. So I hope this video clears it all up. It's super simple. You're just dividing two numbers. And now you can compare and track the performance of your system over time. Also, I would love to know your guys' peak sun hours, so leave it in the comments below if you're calculating it right now. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.